It was uh, December 29th of 1989, a little before 4 p.m. Uh, our victim, uh, pedestrian, 52-year-old Ruth Martin Buchanan, and her friend had just left the department store on North Tryon Street. were walking down the sidewalk here to the 5th Street intersection. As they crossed the 5th Street intersection across to this side, right here in this left lane in the crosswalk, she was struck by a uh, dark-colored vehicle. Her body landed on the opposite side of the intersection, and that vehicle, according to witnesses, uh, continued, didn't stop, didn't render aid, and continued to flee the scene. Ruth, she was transported to Charlotte Memorial. Unfortunately, she died the following afternoon. Some of the witnesses were able to obtain a, a vehicle description, and more than one was able to get a tag number for the vehicle that struck her. Uh, detectives that were assigned the case in 1989 they were able to determine that that tag was stolen from a Mercedes-Benz, but that Mercedes was not the vehicle that was associated with this crash. New Year's Day in 1990, there was a suspicious vehicle call for service that was placed at the Comfort Inn. When officers responded, they were able to determine that the tag matched the witness description of the vehicle that struck Ruth Buchanan when the assigned investigator, retired Sergeant Shelton, when he responded with crime scene, they were able to obtain some trace evidence from the exterior of the vehicle and confirmed that it was the vehicle that struck Ruth on December 29. Turned out to be a 1990 Mitsubishi Galant. They were able to obtain personal items from inside those vehicles, one of which was a possible marijuana joint, but that was inside that car. The case did sit open, uh, unsolved for the next 32 years. In 2022, I received a, a Crime Stoppers tip indicating that uh, the anonymous tipster knew who was involved in this collision and was willing to give information on that. That the tipster, though accurate about some of the details, was completely inaccurate in who he wanted to indicate had committed this crime. When Detective Ober looked into our property control system, there were still items that were in CMPD property control. One of those items happened to be a possible marijuana cigarette that was located from inside the suspect vehicle when it was recovered at the motel. Uh, Detective Obra contacted our crime lab and spoke to a DNA supervisor. They looked at different items, decided that this cigarette butt was probably the best one to try and test for DNA. The challenge we had is the positive hit of DNA came back to an individual named Herbert Stanback. And at the time this incident occurred, he was shown incarcerated in prison at a place called Charlotte Correctional, which no longer exists. Earlier this year, I thought, well, the only real way to get to the bottom of this is to go and speak to Mr. Stanback himself who was currently, he's still incarcerated in the Department of Adult Corrections in North Carolina. So we were able to make arrangements through the warden to go down and speak to Mr. Stanback in prison. We ended up making two separate visits down to see Mr. Stanback in prison. On our second visit, he did provide a full confession as to his involvement in this incident. Interestingly, he was incarcerated at Charlotte Correctional, but he was on a work release program at the time where they would leave in the morning and come back in the evening. And he was working at a hotel one or two blocks up the street on North Tryon Street. So he was driving that vehicle after he had left his uh, work release place at the hotel, struck Miss Buchanan and uh, fled. From there, uh, the vehicle was dumped at the motel and he ended up going back to prison that night. It's a once in a career type thing, very rewarding feeling just to be able to notify the family of something like that. I was able to speak to uh, Ruth's son and be able to bring that kind of closure to the family. It's certainly not a, a phone call that, that they would have been expecting. I think this stands as an example. Of course, not every case is gonna be solved this way, but you never know what's gonna happen 20, 30, or 35 years down the line. And the fact that the scientific means of being able to obtain DNA linking it, not to a specific uh, gene pool, but to, to a specific individual over three decades later is amazing. It really is. We don't get to where we get without people coming forward, people staying on scene. Between the information they give us and the amount of detail that's taken down by the uh, initial report and responding officers, those are key for us to be able to get success in any kind of case.